Grab your beverages and turn up your interweb. Solving the world's problems 12 ounces at a time. It's Dudes and Beer. Well, hello everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Chris Jordan, your host here, coming at you live from Austin, Texas. Oh man, we have so much for you tonight. We we have an official, an official teaser tonight for Curious Realm. I am so entirely excited. We are two weeks away. Uh, next week is our finale. We will be having our original co-host, uh, Stephen Bishop, back in the studio we will be having our good friend, Billy Joe Kane, one of the many guests who kind of changed the direction of this show uh, when he first came on with his VR work in the world of educating people on human trafficking with the Radical Empathy Education Foundation. So he will be on as well as our good friend, Mike Turber, as well as our good friend, Dr. John Hall, uh, catching up, going over things. Uh, these are, once again, folks, guests that really were pivot points in the show that brought us to what we are now, to the realm of guests that we have now, people like our guest, uh, the great Reverend Michael J.S. Carter, our author of Initiation, um, great book about the spiritual transformation of the experiencer. Uh, we had him on a couple of months ago talking about this book when it first came out, and it's a great read. It's fantastic tonight. We will be talking about manifestation, taking this to the next level. That concept um, that our that our good friend and listener, uh, Wavy Dave Everett, questioned. Um, what about hypostatic union? What about that union of the divine and human, um, as was present in Christ? Things like that, and the Christ-like atmosphere and Christ-like vibration that lives in all of us and our connection to the divine. So we will be getting into that. So much more with our guest, Michael J.S. Carter, tonight. Um, in addition to that, I want to thank everybody, of course, for their votes. And on our way out, being voted uh, Best News and Politics Show, uh, the People's Choice Podcast Awards. It's because of all you guys out there, all of our fans, all of our listeners, stuff like that, that we were able to even enter such a competition, much less beat out things like the Politico EU podcast. Stuff like that. Um, it is these topics. It is these conversations. It's all that that keeps this show going, that keeps it motivated, keeps it moving forward. It is all about that uncomfortable conversation that all too sadly and all too often our society is not ready or even willing to have. Um, and a lot of that comes directly from our dudes and beer group. Stop on by and check that out. Here's our news of the week from our Dudes and Beer group on Facebook, uh, Curious Realm, formerly Dudes and Beer. In two weeks, it will officially just be Curious Realm. Uh, listener Willie Um posted out of thehill.com, ex-president Trump given ninth degree black belt in Taekwondo. Um, there's your headline. <laughs> Uh, this one that I posted a little while ago, hot off the presses out of yahoonews.com. Um, Brian Laundrie's uh, lawyer came out, the family lawyer came out and said that he was apparently dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. So uh, Brian Laundrie apparently committed suicide before he was found. Um, also out of Yahoo News, Waukesha tragedy that killed six people and injured 62 others was, quote, an intentional act to hurt as many people as possible. Um, according to the police there in Waukesha County, Matt Hale, listener, uh, posted out of cityam.com, UN crowns nuclear as the lowest carbon electricity source. Uh, true, all it does is use steam. So um, out of Reuters.com, after a century and a half, Ethiopian artifacts are returned home. And out of Vox.com, uh, in relation to our guest a week or so ago, uh, Dr. Robert Duncan, brain reading tech is coming. The law is not ready to protect us. That is just some of the articles that we have posted here in the last week. 
over on the Curious Realm, formerly Dudes and Beer Group on Facebook. Stop on by, check it out, join the conversation. Um, this is this is where we come up with guest topics, ideas. Uh, this is where the conversation continues after the show. So go on by, check that out. Stop on by and join. While you're online checking that out, more calls to action for you. Stop on by the Dudes and Beer podcast. Now, let me get this straight, folks. Dudes and Beer is not going away. Like, the show is going away, but the website, the content, the knowledge vault, all that stuff, still going to be there. Never, ever, ever going away. I fully intend to keep that content up for all eternity. Uh, We have more than a month and a half of actual shows so like you can go through and listen to dudes and beer at least as of 300 it was over a month of content where you could listen to dudes and beer 24 7 and never hear the same content for over a month so uh we're gonna keep that up we're gonna keep that going dudesandbeer.com is the website um but our sister site the new site coming to you soon everybody Curious Realm, CuriousRealm.com, because of you guys Googling it, asking family to Google it, we have officially taken over the front page of Google. Um, We do not have a single episode posted yet. We don't even have old episodes of Dudes and Beer, but that is the power and sway that you guys carry with your finging fingers on Google, is, is being able to raise a website with... Nothing but static pages, no no new content being generated, nothing like that. Uh, you're able to bring that to the top of Google and to the top of the eyes of the Internet. Um, that is the power that we hold in this day and age, folks. So stop on by, check it out, CuriousRealm.com. Click free app, even down at the bottom right here. Um, click here to download the app. All you do is click the image and bam, there's the APK. So if you have an Android device, anything like that, uh, your tablet, all you have to do is visit the website, click it, and download it. We believe in our listeners' privacy. We do not want you to have to give your information over to a machine or a marketplace or anything like that to get our content if you don't have to. So we have made our app officially sideloadable on Android devices. We are working on that Um in the apple market right now stuff like that so um fantastic go on by check that out curiousrealm.com forward slash app is the page everything is available there live listening um past listening of episodes you can go through and check out the knowledge vault all the declassified documents that we talk about on air all available at your fingertips including a free tip calculator Very important in this day and age of getting back out into the world to make sure that you're taking care of those essential employees properly. So stop on by, check it out. CuriousRealm.com is the website. CuriousRealm.com forward slash app is where you can go to download the free app. And, of course, while you are on the Internet, make sure to stop on by our friends at True Him Science. True Him Science is home to some of the best darn CBD product out there. I travel the country. I go to dispensaries regularly. About three years ago, my doctor recommended CBD to me as a supplemental for my travel. And the day I found True Hemp Science, I stopped going to dispensaries to find CBD. Hands down, some of the best product out there. Full spigeric proprietary process. Uh, They use and reuse every part of the plant from the buds to the stems to the leaves, to the seeds, to the roots. Every part of the plant is used and reused to give you the best concentration of CBD, terpenes, and other CBD-related derivatives. Stop on by, check it out. TrueHimScience.com is the website. Dude7 is the code that you want to use to save 7% off your entire cart of $50 or more while you're there. And, And in addition, you will get two count them two free edibles 25 milligram edibles uh fantastic stuff the cookies are like the size of my hand they're amazing stop on by check it out curious realm 
Curious Realm. Ha ha, Curious 7 is the code that you want to use at our friends, truehimscience.com. And of course, um, we would be hugely remiss if we were not shameless and play our commercial from our good friends at Podcast Cadet. Ooh, wait, that's not it at all. Here you go. Have you considered starting a podcast? Looking for a way to make your business a voice of authority in an industry? Then Podcast Cadet is the solution for you. Whether starting a podcast for yourself, your brand, business, school, church, or just plain fun, Podcast Cadet is here to help you navigate the waters of the podcast industry. Specializing in one-on-one consultation and training with industry professionals in fields ranging from podcast technology and editing to distribution, monetization, and even social media strategies, Podcast Cadet tailors their services to the specific needs of you and your podcast. Do you already have a podcast and trying to find ways to engage and grow your audience? Sign up for your Podcast Cadet audit today and let us help you explore new and exciting ways to leverage your content and elevate your podcast brand to whole new levels. From consultational workshops to affordable podcast production and maintenance packages, Podcast Cadet is your one-stop shop for everything podcast-related on the Internet. Visit podcastcadet.com today to sign up for your consultation or training and use code DUDES20 to save 20% off your entire purchase. That website again is podcastcadet.com. Well, that's right, folks. Stop on by, check it out. Podcastcadet.com. Full disclosure, I am one of the owners of Podcast Cadet. I started Podcast Cadet because I love this industry. I love what this is all about, and I love to make sure that people do it right from the get-go. So stop on by, check it out, podcastcadet.com. Now, before we bring on Reverend Michael J.S. Carter, author of the amazing book, Initiation, I've got to share it with you. It is literally hot off the press. You just heard a teaser a second ago when I misfired a cue, Um, but... We officially have the intro done for Curious Realm, and I'm so excited. I have to share it with you guys. So get ready. Here it is for the first time ever, Um, your fix of the new music from Curious Realm as well as the video intro. Coming to you from the city of the weird. Exploring topics from the esoteric and unexplored to dimensions unknown. Shining a light of truth on the darkest corners of our reality. Welcome to the Curious Realm. And there you have it, folks. I'm telling you, I, I simply cannot wait, cannot wait. Cannot wait for this transmogrification that is coming in less than two weeks. Um, I was talking with Dr. Danger Carpenter today, guest and good, good friend of the show, about um, something that we mentioned on air when when I turned 45. uh, The fact that I was willing to emulate myself for my audience And it will be happening. Uh, It will be happening this weekend. You will get to see that in our final episode. So if you want to stay tuned for anything in episode 350 of Dudes and Beer, folks, um, it's the fact that I'm going to be setting myself on fire. Uh, (laughs) If you don't want to tune in for that, um, there's something special going on there. And speaking of something special, our special guest is waiting on the line right now. Michael J.S. Carter, how are you today? Hey, brother. Are you going to set yourself on fire? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. Oh, my goodness. That is that is my love for my audience, is, is what that is. Um, I can't not do it. It's an opportunity that I have in <laughs> life. Uh, 
not necessarily stunt work, but special effects work is what really got my motor going as a kid and what what led yeah. to me being an audio in- engineer, like being involved in theater, building sets, doing lighting design and all that. It's it's what led to my career. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, for me, being able to do something like that where it's like, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put on a fire suit and I'm going to set myself on fire. Um, that's a life moment for me. <laughs> well, as long as, as long as you, you know, as long as you come back, that's all. That's all I was asking. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I, I got a gig. <laughs> okay. I got a gig the week after it's that, it. so I, I can't. Seen anybody do that since the Vietnam War? Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and, know what I mean. But it's but, an attention getter. I can tell you. Well, it, it's not just an attention getter. It's a it's a level of commitment, you know. Um, and and even when you're talking about that famous moment. Um, it's a level of commitment that I don't oh, no think question. I don't think most people are ready for in that mindset, and I I don't think yeah. that most people in the world really grasp, you know, um, which which is part of what we're going to be talking about tonight that that union of physical and divine, and and that bridge that we make to the divine that can just put us in a different place on a regular basis, you know? Um, and yeah. I, th- I think it's something that our society, um, it's, it's interesting how I guess agnostic our society has become, even though, even though it's always been there. Um, and, and I don't necessarily mean like God, big G Jesus or anything like that, but just, yeah. The concept of something greater than yourself, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good point. I, I you know, I, I, there's. I think, I think that the more highly technological it becomes, the more it can struggle um, with that kind of. Um, we can use the word divinity, if you will, because. You know, nothing is, you know, things just get to be blasé because when, when you're highly, highly technological, things that used to bring awe and wonder um, don't do that so much anymore because yeah. you've kind of seen it all. And th- that's one thing that I think is um, interesting about UFO phenomenon um, and experiencers is that you find this, you know, you, depending on what race you encounter experience, because all of them are highly technological, and some of them are, de- some of them are deeply spiritual beings, and so they have found a way to merge technology and spirituality, mm. which is something we struggle to do on our planet. And, and, and why so do you? It's interesting. Why do you? Why do you think that is? I mean, of course, of course, anybody uh, going to any model of life outside our planet would, of course, assume the fact, especially if they are coming here, visiting here, anything like that. The fact that they would be far advanced beyond us, not just technologically, but societally. Um, because you got to, even if you're traveling at light speed, you got to have something special to be living in outer space with other people, you know, you have to have a different level of understanding of that connection that you have with others. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to have that, you know, consciousness, um, that, that awareness, uh, you know, we have, and and that's a word that's in vogue now. It's a lot of folks who are higher uh, vibrations and higher minds than me that are still trying to find out what it is. I just, I just call it um, uh, uh, being aware, mm. uh, and that, and, and and that I'm aware of my connection to all that is. I'm aware that what I do to you, I'm doing to myself, and so there's a depth there. But I think that we're struggling with that. We can cert- we certainly have the technology to make a difference. Uh, for the better, we seem to be obsessed with and that kind of thing, and so that makes us dangerous mm. to other 
uh, uh, beings in other dimensions. I mean, we've already split the atom twice at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. We're not even going to have to go into what we do underground and those types of things. Yeah. But it's, um, you know, it's it, we're dead. Sometimes too much knowledge is dangerous for folks because knowledge doesn't always equate into wisdom. And so as we want to talk about manifesting, um, you know, in the, we, we have to envision the kind of world we want to live in. We have to envision the kind of people we want to be. Now, that doesn't make, that doesn't mean that we still will maybe get hit by an asteroid or climate change will take us out or we'll just barbecue each other to death. It doesn't mean that that won't happen, but it does mean that if we individually try to, to, to keep that connection or, yeah. or cultivate a connection, then we are doing whatever happens when we look back on our lives, we can say, you know what, I left my, my place in the garden just a little better than it was when I found it. Yeah. And, and that's what the consciousness is all about. Not worrying about what Christopher's doing, what Michael's doing. He's not doing that. Look over there. That's not, that's not your concern. It's none of your spiritual business. Yeah. What you are responsible, what we are responsible for, is how do we manifest the kind of world and the kind of people we want to be? And, and by doing that, you, there's meditation, there's contemplation, uh, there's being close to nature. There's cultivating mm. a religious or spiritual life. They're not always the same thing, but they are very similar. Yeah. And those are the, the, the spiritual technologies, I like to call them, that we can use to manifest the kind of world we want to be, the yeah. kind of world we want to live in. Well, and let, let's kind of start cracking the nut on this concept of manifestation real quick. But before we do, um, Ryan Milios, uh, a listener, uh, actually just rang in with this question. I think we are natural, or statement slash question, I think we are naturally connected to a spiritual world where we dream. These people found out about how to disconnect us from the real one and replace it with their techn technology realm. And that is why targeted individuals see them in their dreams. Um, and, and sure, you know, we, we talk about that kind of technology all the time. Um, I mean, heck, right now, advertisers are fighting for the right to be able to put ads into dreams, um, stuff like that. But how, I guess, how do dreams, how does, how does that realm of relaxation and release for our brain tie into the world of manifestation because I, I think that everybody there is an active part of manifestation but there's also a very important passive part as well and I think that that's a lot of where the dream realm comes in is being able to relax and kind of process that information as you go through your day well yeah yeah well I, I first of all all genuine spiritual paths talk about um, being still, mm. that that you want to be a human being and not a human doing. So we've heard, you know, the cliches, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way, where, where prayer is talking to God and med meditating is listening. Well, well however you want to frame it, the point is, is that you have to learn to be still so you can hear what the universe, what the multiverse is trying to tell you. Yeah. And, and, and in a world that's high, highly technological, stillness is not one of the things that's being emphasized. You've got to be doing. You've got to be, because we're over titillated, we're overstimulated. And so in order to get off of that treadmill, if you will, then you have to be able to be still and, and, and to be able to calm the mind. And that way, you can be open to the good, to the ideas, um, uh, to the emotions, to just your own inner voice. Yes, I see someone put up, uh, be still and know that I'm God. Yeah, and, and it's said different ways in different 
spiritual paths. And so it's crucial. And what's the old what's the old adage? Uh, try to meditate for uh, 20 minutes every day. And when you're really busy, do it for an hour. Yep. I mean, it's counterintuitive, but that's when you really need to do it. Yeah. When you and, and it's it's difficult, but once you groove, it's like when you exercise and you don't for a while, your body goes, "Hey, man, what what are we doing here? What we, we need to work out." Well, yeah. It's the same thing when you're exercising. Your you know you're in cultivating your inner life. Yeah. Uh, once you start meditating, you you know when you stop for any reason, you'll be reminded, hey, we need to sit yep. or we need to go take a walk in the woods or we need to just just slow it down for a minute. And, and that's a muscle. That is that is something that it, I, I'm finally getting back to a point um, where I can find quiet. Um, I yeah. used to be able to do it at a heartbeat. It was easy for me to stop, pray, meditate. Um, and, and I remember my spiritual director, Father Andy Colzo, when I was in the seminary, um, giving me giving me the the thirty thirty instruction, P thirty L thirty. If you pray for thirty minutes, listen for thirty minutes. You done yeah. enough talking now. Shut up and give him his chance. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and yeah. I I think that that's a lot of where we as a society, at least here in America get lost with that spirituality is that we're looking for that immediate result. We're looking for, we're looking for that a expected result that we expect, not necessarily the result that is best for us spiritually. Um, the result that might be the best in the long run for us, our family, our health, everything else. We want the result we want. And if we don't get that, then, then where's the proof of the miracle? You know, well, well, yeah, yeah. Now, now, there's a flip side. First mm. of all, I agree with you, um, and that's why you have to say, you know, um, may you know, may this or something better manifest for the greater good for all concerned, or not my will but thine be done. However, you want to phrase it, but but the positive part of that is that when I put my intention out in a prayer, in an affirmation, call it what you will, I expect it to happen. My word shall not come back to me void. And so that's the positive part, Amen. That, that I'm not begging, I'm not, I'm affirming. Yeah. And, and that's very, very crucial. It's very vital in manifestation. I was listening to Steve Harvey. Um, I listened I to these man. tapes. Yeah, yeah. I, I was listening to these folks talk about manifestation. I try to do it every morning because there's some things I'd like to do. And um, and he says it beautifully. He says, and this is changing now, so I want to be fair to those scientists out there, especially quantum physics. But science says, show me and I'll believe you. Yeah. Faith says, believe it and then I'll show you. That's right. Two two very different ways of looking at life. Spirituality, faith, call it what you will. I you know, I you know, if you believe it, I'll show you. But the other paradigm is of course, no, come on. I, yeah, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. And it doesn't work that way. It, mm. it, 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 yeah. You're going backwards. Yeah. You have to you have to uh uh you're going the other way. You have to believe it's here now. Yep. That's how you manifest it. You have to act as if it's already happening. Yeah. You have to feel it. You have to believe it. And then it will show up yeah. in your life. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's the law of attraction, there, basically. It, it is. It is. It really is. And it, it, an example I used to give people that I taught years ago was I, I gave them all a slinky. And then I told them just to sit there and look at the slinky while we did class. And, and the whole exercise was the fact of the slinky is a spring. That is nothing yes. but potential energy wound up yes. ready for action. Yes. But hold that slinky in your hand and put another one there. Wish, want, desire all you want without you moving that slinky. It yes. ain't going to go. You got to push. Right. You got to put exactly. into yeah, the slinky to, to get yeah. something back. Yeah. You, 
Exactly. You've got to work with it. But like at the beginning of the show or before the show, someone was talking about uh, the connection between, um, you know, uh, they were talking about Jesus in the sense of being divine yeah. and human. I get the term. But the thing is, hypostatic is that union. We, yes. We are most godlike when we are being creative. That's right. You know what I mean? Because that's when we're, when we're manifesting. And, 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 you know, Buddhism talks about, uh, you know, you got to watch your speech and all, again, all spiritual paths oh, yeah. talk about that. You know, uh, is it, you know, the three gates, what is it necessary? Is it hurtful or is it true? Um, you, you know, but when we speak our words, when we, when we visualize what we want, when we affirm, we, that's when we're most godlike. And that's the God in us. And people don't want to hear that because it puts a lot of responsibility on you because then you're not it's a scary. victim. It's scary. You're not a victim anymore. Yeah, that's a lot of power. It, and so, but, but then again, the church taught us that. The church taught us that everything was out there. Yeah. That, and that we were separated from it. And then others, other saints and avatars come along. Yeshua comes along specifically and says, the kingdom of heaven is within you. It's done unto you as you believe. And he meant that. And he said, yeah. greater things than I do, you shall do. You can say to this mountain, move yeah. over here. We talked about, you know, people moving mountains for their health, people moving mountains in their relationships. But yeah. people don't take because we say, oh, that can't happen to me because this person is special. He's he's the son of God. She's the but but we're all sons and daughters of God. And yeah. so what 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 they can do, we can do too. But we've been taught. Oh, what are you talking about, man? What that's blasphemy. Who do you think you are? And so you get separated from your power. And religion religions did that. Oh yeah, yeah they did. Religions did that. That that God or whoever is way over there and you're way over here and if it wasn't for this you 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 don't even deserve the good and so for me when you manifest you have to des you have to whether it's a, a positive relationship whether it's a new job you have to know and believe that you deserve the good that comes into right. your life because if you don't believe it. No matter what's coming your way, you're going to find a way to deflect it. Yeah. You're going to find a way to destroy it because on a deep level, well, I'm not worthy. And who and who tells you that? When when you go to church when you're a kid, you're not worthy. Yeah. If it wasn't for him, you're not worthy. You're a worm. Mm -hmm. you're, you're 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 a miserable sinner. And so, how do you expect to grow from that? Yeah. I know for me, I had to unlearn mostly all that stuff that I was taught. I'm yeah. not talking about UFOs and, and that. I'm just talking about um, uh, I had to learn that, wait a minute, I'm coming from the source. I'm coming from God. So, you know, people say, well, God didn't make junk. However words you want to use. But if I'm coming from the source, that means I'm made of the same stuff. Do yeah. I make mistakes? Yeah. Sin is falling short of the mark. That's what it means in Greek, sure. missing the mark. But I am worthy of the good that comes to me. Yeah. And then I can manifest and I can pass that on to my daughter that you are worthy. You are loved. I can't pass to her that that dysfunction, that you're miserable and that you're a worm. And that the only reason that, you yeah. know, you're getting anything is because Santa Claus up in the sky is deeming you worthy. And if you're naughty or nice, that doesn't work. At least it doesn't work for yeah. me anymore. But, and, and, you know, um, that is that is the prime example that I give people, uh, Michael, is that um, my spirituality became the measure with which I measured the world, not and my place within it, not my religion, not not yeah. the doors of a building with it's which I went in and worshipped with yes. people of like mind. Um, that is that, and I think a lot of people, especially in a, like. Hey, I'm Roman Catholic. It's what I was brought up. Um, okay. And I, I think a lot of people forget the fact that um, the very last thing that happens in the Roman Catholic Mass is a charge to action. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Like, 
That is that is your call to action every single mass for you to for no matter what happens in your week for you to go out and do that. You could come back here next week. You could not. But when you leave these doors, don't forget to go do that. Um, When you see the opportunity to help somebody help somebody because you might need to be helped. Um, Right. Because faith, faith without works is, you know, it's dead as a doorknob. Yeah. And and so. So in, in some ways, I mean, when I look at Yeshua, hmm. and of course we celebrate, you know, in, in the next month or so. Sure. You know, for instance, he was a Jew, right? But he was a different kind of Jew. And he was, and, and remember the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees. Oh, yeah. And they were saying, you, you are not doing what Moses told us to do. And he's saying, I, you know, I respect Moses. I'm paraphrasing, but he said, I'm, I'm bring, I want you to bring it. I want you to bring your A game. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, in the old Testament, you, 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 you got to love other Jews. Okay. The 10 commandments, um, you know, those were like, you, this is, you don't, you don't sleep with another Jewish person's wife. Yeah. You don't steal from another Jewish person. Yeah. You know, there was a, when Jesus comes along several thousand years later and he says, okay, I got that, but you got to bring your A game. Now you have to what? You have to learn to love your enemies. You got to yeah. at least try. Yeah. That means the Roman. Okay. That means Caesar. Yeah. Okay. And it wasn't this love like, oh, I just love you. And, you know, it, it wasn't that kind of Mickey Mouse kind of love. It's the, It was a mature love that, you know, I'm not going to let you walk over me, but yeah. you are a child of the universe just as I am. And so when you've been raised one way, you know, and then you ha- you, you, you kind of wake up. You you become your consciousness changes. Let's use yeah. that word. Yeah. And you have to say, wait a minute, some of these teachings don't resonate with me. Some of these teachings seem more human made yeah. than coming from a creator. Uh, 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 and so then the journey starts. Yeah. And so Jesus, you know, he was broadening what it meant to be Jewish, and people were saying, no. No, you're not one of us. You've changed. So yeah. it's like when you say, I'm a Christian, I'm just using these, words. this could be for Overarching anybody, terms. I'm a follower of the teachings of Jesus. Well, that means the people who think they have it together, you're going you're gonna to rattle some cages because you're going to expand. And you just have to know that people before you did that, and you may catch a little bit of hell, yep. and it may be, a, but but you know what I mean? Because when I look at his life, and beyond the boundaries of religion, he was a rabble you know, rouser. He, there he is, was many things. Yeah, there, well, he was he was changing the status quo. Oh, absolutely. There is not a single yeah, yeah. thing in the big yeah. red words of the New Testament, the actual words of Christ. Um, that A, goes against Jewish religion or faith of the time. It was countercultural, yes. Or, uh, at the same token, totally flies in the face of the Sanhedrin and the the local proletariat that was handling everything on behalf of the Roman government. Um, And he, he said revolutionary things like, hey, Give to Caesars what is Caesars. Like, if, yes. if Caesar's imposing a tax, pay the man. He's keeping you safe. He's got soldiers out on the street at night, right? You got plumbing? We're, we're, we're coming up as a society because of them? Like, take care of that, but take care of yourself and, and watch your own backyard. You know, it, it comes as a thief in the night. And I, I think that what a lot of people forget is that concept of hypostatic union. It is that concept. Um, the one thing that I bring up about the teachings of Christ all the time is that, um, never forget that that first time that we hear about him teaching, he is 12 years old. He's 12 years old, left the caravan, mom and dad are looking for him and they end up finding him in, in the sanctuary, teaching the rabbis and the Sanhedrin. Um, now, technically, by all right, the only reason why any of those high priests or Sanhedrin um, would be listening to a 12-year-old 
was if he was possibly a Kabbalistic student. Pretty rare for somebody to be that young and be a Kabbalistic student, but there were definitely students that, you know, shook foundations, had a greater understanding than most. Um, And when you think about it that way and then start to think about the direct contact that Christ was giving to the divine, to God, um, saying you do not have to go offer burnt offering. You you don't have to do this. You do not have to have the intermediary between you and God. You God breathed into you. You you intrinsically partake in the create. Like the universe was spoken into creation. So what you speak is. Um, and that's a very very old um, Jewish Kabbalistic concept. The idea of us uniquely being breathed into with life amongst all other creatures. And because of that, we have the breath of the divine in us. And yeah, what we say matters. Um, What we say is, you can take back an action, but it's real hard to take back words. It's real hard to, it's real hard to take back a slight because of words that you've said. You could come up and like punch your buddy in the face and have a beer and laugh about it an hour later and be like, man, you sucker punched me. You got me. Um, Start talking about his mom over a beer and be serious about it. See, see where the conversation goes. You know, Um, we, we are responsible for what we say. We are accountable for what we say and for what we put out into the universe. Yeah, because that's what we manifest. The universe doesn't think like we do. The universe yeah. reflects what you already are. And uh, I was listening to Paulo Coelho talking about um, manifestation, and he said this, and I can resonate with it. He said, what I experience in my life is that when I really wanted something, I always got it, both positive and, and negative. negative. Because of the subconscious mind. And, 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 you know, if you have these fears, you can say every day that I'm blessed and highly favored. But if you don't really believe that, your life is going to show. Because the universe only mirrors back what you are. Yeah. And so if you're more loving, then you'll, 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 you'll meet more loving people. If you're a kind person, you'll meet more kind. What's the old saying that... Uh, uh, what you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear you. Mm. In other words, I, you know, I can feel your vibration for what you really are. Yeah. No matter how much talking you're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and so to manifest is to be godlike. Without without going into the dogmas and creeds of the, of the church and Absolutely. all that stuff. When you, when you cut away the fat and spit out the bones, when I am my, at my creative best, whether that's speaking, whether that's healing, whether that's when I take the time to meditate, when I'm envisioning where I want to be, because thoughts are things. Yep. So we create our own reality. And like Wayne Dwyer says uh, when, we, when he was alive, um, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. Yeah. Yeah. Quantum physics tells us that. And so that's where the manifestation comes in. And that's when we are our most creative and godlike. Yeah, absolutely. And now listener Gene Krause, who's also a a great contributor to our community online, uh, asked the question or really made the statement. um, The problem is, these technologies that are out there tend to override the natural, um, which which is. I don't ab- know. I don't. I don't know if that's true. Okay. I, you know, because because what it is is like saying money is bad. Okay, money is neutral. It's our attitudes about it. I mm. mean, she's listening to us because of technology. She's listening to me in North Carolina. Yeah. And, and where you are, because of because of. What technology can do. Technology saves people's lives. It's our intention. That's another thing about manifestation. What are you intending? So to me, to me, uh, and I don't don't want to 
you know, I'm not saying that th this individual yeah. is wrong. No, 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 I'm absolutely just not. There's another way to look at it yep. that the technology is neutral. It's what we do with it. Yeah. We have beings coming here. Some of them don't even need ships, but we have beings coming here. And 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 the Bible tells us about them, the, the Dharmapada, yep. uh, uh, you know, the Upanishads, yep. and some of these things Bhagavad are deeply spiritual, and they're bringing these messages, and they're using technology. Yeah. So I, it's hard for me to say that technology is bad. We have to we have to not lose sight of that. We have to say, you know what? I'm going to go take a walk in the woods. Yeah. I'm going to go watch that sunset. Yeah, because you have to have the spiritual wherewithal not to be distracted. I'm not saying that's not easy. No, because technology can be a distraction. Facebook, you know, uh, Twitter. But is that them, or is that us not being able to manage it? Well, and granted, you know, uh, we we have quite a community of targeted individuals, TIs, in 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 our ranks uh not only in our social media group but amongst our listeners as well and we we regularly talk about you know technologies that might be beyond your control um you know th things that are used to electronically harass stuff like that um but i think it's also important to note that while that might be going on the important thing in a of course to stop that to keep that from happening to people um but also to to help you live the best quality life possible when that is not happening, you know, and, and to make sure that when you're not a target of that, that you're maximizing every part of your day, every part of your life that you can, like we were saying earlier, and like you were just saying, it's the intent of the technology and the use of the technology. You know, well, it's also it's also where you want to put your mind. Yeah. I have friends who are who are who are very much activists, mm. and I love them, and I love them. But I have to get away from them sometimes because they have a problem for every solution. So you have to decide mm. what am I go? How am I going to? Where am I going to put my energy? If if it's your fight, I'm going to stand up to to this, and what they're doing is wrong, and then that's okay. Because that's your fight. That's yeah. your fight. And, you you know, you don't have to attend every fight you're invited to, but it's where you want to put your energy. Yes, there's 5G, there's stuff in the air. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But you have to learn what, like you said, what, what do I have control over? Yeah. Okay? And I have to pick my battles. You know what I mean? To me, technology, yes, but it's still a beautiful world. We just had a beautiful lunar eclipse the other night. Yeah, uh, it's 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 the holiday season. You know what I mean? It depends on where you're going to put your focus, because you can always find something wrong. You know, but it but if you have that kind of spirit, and I got to fight the five G, and I got to fight what they're doing with the, then that's that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but. Don't you don't want to let your struggle become your identity because then you can't see the beautiful things about technology. Yeah. You know, it's just like again, I, it's the same thing with money. People say money's evil. Money's not evil. If it's evil, give me yours then. Yeah. It's our attitude. Give, give me yours, money. I'll do some good with it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, give me your money. Yeah, if it's that bad, then give it to me. Yeah. You know? Uh, and, and so you know, because there's always three sides to every story. There's yours, mine, and the truth. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's something that we talk about regularly on this program is the, the concept of uh, truth is relative to the observer. There is a capital yes. T universal yes. truth that's out there. Yes. But truth as we know it, lowercase t, um, is a very personal, very lensed and filtered situation yes um exactly and i mean the prime example is talk, talk to a brother and a sister that grew up in the same house um where there was abuse going on or even two brothers you know um something like that uh they don't always have the the same impression the same story the we all filter things a different way. We all yeah. we all work yeah. with things a different way and, and build our yes. edifice in a different way. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but again, if you just want to throw this in again about manifestation, there has to be some gratitude. Oh, yeah. Right? It's and, the give yeah, and take. If you don't have gratitude, you know, like like technology, it, it gives me a fit sometimes. I'm not the most tech savvy or something will break down or whatever, but I'm glad I got it. I just got this new computer. My church just brought me this new laptop and uh, I, I, I need it for work, but it makes my, I can have this conversation with you. Yeah. I can sell my books. I can do my lectures. I can do many things. Yeah. Now, I'm not in that level where I can, you know, you know the, what they do with harp or whatever. With the, I, I, that's that's beyond me, and I'm sure it's not the greatest for me. But I'm not. That's a battle. I'm not. I'm, I don't need to fight that battle. But I am saying yeah. that you can put. I can put down my Facebook. I can put this down, and I can say, Mr. Zuckerberg, I'm mm-hmm. going to go take a walk in the park. I'm going to go meditate. That's on me. Yeah. He's trying to make money. So, um, you know, I, I'm just saying, I'm not saying that technology can't be used for wrong, but I'm also saying that we have, we have a say in it. We, we, can, we can choose not to be some slaves to it. Yeah. We can choose that. Yeah, we, and, and that's an absolute truth. Uh, you know, there, of course, targeting things like that aside, we, we have the choice as to what we opt into. Like a, a friend of mine was over here earlier at my house, and he was like, wow, I can't believe you have an Alexa. Um, I used to do a piece on the show called Ask Alexa, where before we asked the guest questions, I did a segment earlier in the day where I asked Alexa the same kind of questions. And eventually Alexa would just lose sync. Like as we would get into like really deep, hard questions about like demons or exorcism or megalithic cultures, eventually Alexa would be like, you know, I don't know, but there's a unicorn in the back of your castle. Would you like to feed it? Um, Just come up with these random things because you just stumped it too many times. Um, But he was like, I'm really surprised you have an Alexa. And I was like, oh, well, it's on this power switch. And I hit a switch on my desk and everything went quiet. I was like, so if I don't want it to listen to me, I just remove the power. And, you know, and and we don't hear about it a lot in the West, but, you know, thinking about the audience members, they, both, you know, two things can be right. Mm. Yes, yes, technology can make distract us let's sure. use that as a word that's right and that's true and what i was saying is true as well mm. that we can have oh, and, absolutely. And because, yeah in the west we get really polarized well it's got to be this or that and usually it's a gray area in between i i would agree that it can distract us highly technological civilizations tend to get more secular but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the point I'm making. And even if everybody around you is, then that doesn't mean you have to be. Yeah. It may be more difficult and more uncomfortable, but um, you don't have to be. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I, we like to say that we are as purple as possible on this show when it comes to politics things like that uh we to me it is it's all the conversation i mean heck half the topics we talk about on this show um would have been anathema to i mean you'd have you'd have been kicked out of a town 200 years ago you'd you'd have possibly been burned at the stake in the 1500s you'd have been killed you know you know what that's the change in consciousness yes Yes, it's and slow. it took open hearts and open minds to get together and slow. go, you know what, maybe the world is it's round like, like they said a few thousand years ago in Greece, no, it's in slow. Egypt. Human, yeah, human evolution is slow, but it does happen, obviously. Yeah. It may not happen as fast as we'd like, mm. um, but again, if we manifest, if we say, this is the type of person I want to be, and this is the type of world I want to envision. No, we're not going to have all 9 billion people do it because that's impossible. 
But as long as you are doing it, you'll start to see your world change. Yeah. Because it will only reflect back. The universe is intelligent, obviously, but it only reflects back who and what you are. That's And that's not personal. That's no. just a law. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it is done unto you as you believe. Yep. And uh, what you put out comes back. That's just a law. Yeah. And and once again, and that's just a, go go look at the reverberation once again of that inanimate spring called the slinky. It is inanimate. Yes. It is dispassionate. Whatever energy you put into it is what it amplifies on the other end. Yeah. So yeah. you put in bad energy, bad energy's coming out. Just more of it. Right. Um and yeah. And, and, like, we, and you know, we see it in our climate. If yeah. you want to keep on getting what you're getting, keep on doing what you're doing. And and yep. and, and 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 um, nature has no mercy. There's no habeas corpus. No, no. Nature has no mercy. There are certain <laughs> laws you have to follow. Hey, no, no one's and getting out of this thing alive, them, Michael. Yeah, yeah. If you don't follow <laughs> them, then this is what's going to happen. Yeah, and. But, but, but it, you know, we live our lives, collectively speaking, like we can, we can just rape and pillage this planet, that there, there, there's limit, that, you know, we're using all the resources, and um, we just think, well, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. But it's happening. It's happening. And, and if we continue, you know, it's, it, is, it, it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and it, it's a universal law. Yeah, that's just it. It's it. It's a law of physics. It's it's not yes. changing anytime soon. And um, it really is. I think the the more I hate to say woke or wake people up to the fact, but the more that we can get people to understand how their ripple builds bigger ripples when it touches other ripples, you know. Um, it really is that uh, we talk so much about the accountability of your energy when you walk in a room, you know, um, a long time ago. And I was just talking about this, about my industry. A lot of people uh, in the AV field, especially if they're getting like a half day on one show, will go book another show like later in the evening. Um, and about a decade or so ago, I just I could not do that anymore. Um, it was the fact that anything that was residual coming off that other show, any situation that happened, I was dragging it along with me. Yeah. And and going into the next show with that renting the spare space in my head, you know, um, and that's not fair to that client. That's not cool. Like I'm bringing I'm bringing energy and other things from a whole nother show and other problems that happened into here, you know. Yeah, 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 and, and and but you're aware of it. I mean, and a lot of people aren't, you know, and and that's where the consciousness changes. And I get it. Where you can use woke in any kind of context. They, when they asked the Buddha, "Are mm. you a god?" He said, "No." "Are you a holy man?" He said, "No." You know, they asked. I forgot what else they asked him. "Are you a prophet?" He said, "No." And they said, "What are you?" He said, "I'm awake." Yeah, I'm awake. And so. That's the consciousness that Paul talks about it. You know, when I was a child, I thought as a child, mm. but his consciousness changed. You get to see that what I do to the earth, what I do to you, what I do to the waters and, 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 and the animal people, I do to myself. That's what it means to wake up, yeah. that I'm connected I'm not. I'm not um, a, a power unto myself. I did not create myself. Yeah. And so everything is interconnected. We see it now. We see it. If the market's down in Japan, you're going to feel it here tomorrow. When we get up in the morning, I mean that's that's kind of a crude uh, example, but you get my point. We, we're all connected, not just economically, even though. But you see it with COVID. Oh, yeah. And, and so, unfortunately, it takes a crisis for us to kind of wake up and then we forget about it. Yeah. But, but we want to manifest um, 
you know, a robust health. You want, you want, what does that mean? That means, well, I got to start taking care of myself, whether it's vitamins, supplements, I got to get enough air, I got to get enough exercise, I got to, I got to take the time to, to spend some quiet time. Yeah. No matter what's going on around you, because you're trying to manifest the type of world and life you want to, to leave. And again, that's when you're most godlike, and it has nothing to do with what the other person is doing. Michael, you just said we were interconnected. We are interconnected, but there's also free will. You can't control what other people do, but you can you you, you can you can respond to your life. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think that that's very important to to realize. I mean, once again, I think I think a lot of people sadly get get dragged down with the the humdrum of every day. And yeah. and with just the literal grind of life, yeah. you know, I mean, it'll, the, it'll the phrase "life happens." It's it's a yeah. thing. It's a real thing, and especially over the last couple of years with all this madness, um, life has really happened. You know, I mean, <laughs> I, my my wife was talking today. Uh, yeah, like I told you before the show, man, cooking's one of my things. I love cooking. Um, yeah. Like I've done dudes and beer live streams where it's like, hey, everybody, let's learn to make gumbo. And like I'm doing it live on Facebook, Woo! that kind of Good stuff. stuff. And Good stuff. <clears throat> my wife was sharing a thing from her mom. She belongs to a lot of mom's groups on Facebook here locally, things like that. And and the women in her mom's group were talking about like people getting fight, getting in fights at the H-E-B grocery store down the road yeah. o- over the yeah. availability of turkeys or whatnot. It's like. Good Lord, man. Go go half an aisle over and get you a ham. You know? Yeah, Feel you, free to do I, a couple know, of chickens. Be, just just be happy I, that you can even get together this year. No, Let's I, just have nothing no, but pie and celebrate the fact that we can just get I'm, together. I'm yeah, yeah. But now, now <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm with you 110%. The other, but the other part is... That everybody's at a different stage of evolution. Yes. Right. And 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 remembering that brings patience. Hopefully, yes. It, it's it's annoying, um, but everybody's at a different phase of evolution. And so, and remember, at one time we were probably those people, whether it was another life oh, or God, yes. uh, you know. And so, you know, so you just kind of take the deep breath and you go. Man, that's a lot of waste of energy, but that's the way they choose to do it. Yeah, yeah. Y- you know, that's their path. Um, They're yeah, walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And that's hard to do, but it makes you look at the control issues that we have. Yeah. Because a lot of times, I know I'm quick to judge, man. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I'm an INFJ on the Myers Briggs thing, and mm. uh, so it's that J is that judging, and I have to catch myself. Um, and, and I have to be able to allow people, even if I think it's a mistake, let people make their own mistakes. Yeah. But, but it's just about, wait a minute now, just, you know, you can turn that energy in on yourself and you can do something else with it. Um, because people are pretty much the same in a lot of ways. Um, the technology has changed. I mean, obviously we can blow ourselves up a couple of times over and, mm. you know, do all these things. But human nature is, 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 is basically the same all these years. And it's that constant striving to be more self-aware, yeah. to be more, um, to be more accepting. I was going to say tolerant, but that's a rung on the ladder. I guess eventually you want to be accepting, but you know, whatever it is. And 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 you can do that with your spirituality. You can do it and not believe in a creator. Um, but that's 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 the that's the hero's journey, isn't it? That's yeah. the Shiro's journey. To peel the onion of myself, to find out what's really making me tick. Yep. To learn to be accepting, to learn to respond to life and to get, as opposed to reacting to it. Yeah, and to get to the and weepy, to weepy, manifest, soft inside. And and to um, manifest um, what we can do. Now, with that in mind, because I don't want to keep you too long. I know that you're on the East Coast 
things like that. Um, you you have plenty of work to do in in the realm of no, research I'm and work that you do. No, let's let's talk. I, okay, I, I mean, we still got, we still got it, another hour. Because yeah. I, I was going to say what what's what's that first step to I guess disconnecting ego. That would I get I guess that's the the universal concept that people have is that that loss of self um yeah and, and i kind of warn people against that like i think it's i think it's much healthier spiritually to have a well-founded sense of self yes which is which yeah i'm with brother you you just spoke a mouthful i'm not one of those people who said you got to get rid of the ego but i will say this um you and step it's not, aside it's and let things happen <laughs> you, yeah, you, 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 Chris, you you got it. Um, I, I, this is what I've worked on, and I I don't do it all the time, but I do it a lot, and it's helped me. I've, I'm losing the need to have to be right. I'm I'm working on that one hugely. Let me tell you, brother, it's the key to happiness. Um, you know, Krishnamurti. <laughs> you know, who many people thought was the Buddha come back and very deeply spiritual man, um, you know, um, he was an iconoclast, though. He wanted to tear everything. Anyway, I, I, I do admire him, um, but, but I don't agree with everything. But, but no, no, he was saying, you know, you want to know the secret? I don't mind what happens. Just like what you said. You got to take life as it comes. But yeah. let me tell you, the path to inner peace, well, what are the kings? is the need, losing the need to be right. And that's a biggie because there are some yeah. people who, you know, they're, they're going to have hemorrhoids, they're going to have ulcers because they they think they've come to earth to be right. Um, when, I, when I finish a sermon, uh, some people, I have some people who are really argumentative. And they come up in the receiving line and they shake a hand or they'll say, and they'll say, well, I want to talk to you about, about what you said. I, I don't agree with that. And I say to them, okay, we don't have to agree, but do you want to talk to me or do you want to prove me that I'm wrong? Yeah. Well, well, I don't know because I don't yes. have time. Okay. I can share and, and debate and, and even talk, but if you need to be right, if you need to convince me or vice versa, then we're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. Because, but but when I've lost the need to be right, whether it's in my relationship, my my intimate relationship, my erotic relationships, whether it's in my work relationships, I can't tell you the peace that I have discovered. It's it's yeah. it's, it's the peace that passes all understanding, brother. Yeah, and you know, um, I definitely. I, and that's getting that's the, that's taming your ego. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm definitely still working on that. Um, well, it's, but, it's, it's, but yeah, it's still going even there, you'll the, always be working. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, 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 the whole reason why the unfinished pyramid is part of my new new artwork is because we are all <laughs> an unfinished pyramid. Yeah, we'll never be finished. Yeah. You know, the day I, I, the day you stop asking questions, you'll probably not be breathing anymore. Should be yeah. the case. You know, yeah. like the day I stop wondering even why I believe what I believe and even question what I believe and why I believe it, I will be dead. I will question what I believe and why I believe it until the day I die. Because if I don't prove it to myself regularly, like in that Aquinian proof status, if this, then that, um, yeah. to me, I'm lost, you know, um, I, I, I have to prove those things to myself in that way. Well, yeah, who was it? Uh, what's her name? The writer. She says, doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's I like that. Okay, she's a famous writer. And, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, but anyway, I'm sorry. Go and, on. And no, no, I mean, uh, like you were saying earlier, there, there are issues that you have with some thought forms that, that you were definitely reared with. And, and brought up with not only spiritually but religiously. Um, I definitely had my parting of ways religiously um, in a lot of ways with my, my faith is my faith, still there, still hold it. 
Um, but as far as like, okay, you want to be a religion and hold something over me, uh, I can't do that. And I especially yeah. cannot um, make the leap of logic that the church has no teaching on spirits, the afterlife, anything like that. Um, when you have exorcists and you're actively asking me to have faith in something based solely on spectral evidence. So yeah. uh, to me, that's just a huge double standard that I, I could not, I could no longer like the, the cogs of logic, just they slipped off gear from each other. And, yeah. <laughs> and that's no, where I was with yeah. that, you know? Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, listen, we're not, we're, I hear what you're saying, and then there's some things that, you know, we're not going to all be Mr. Spock, and there's some things that logic can't, that, that exist that logic can't figure out. Yeah. Remember what we said, uh, uh, science says, uh, if you show me, I'll believe it, and spirituality says, believe me, and I'll show you. So there's some things that logic can't get. And, and you know, and, and there's some things you live with. Mm. There's some things that you live with. There's some things that are mysteries. And that's why I love the Lakota. Uh, they call uh, the great spirit Wonka Tonkin, the great mystery. Mm. Because in the, in the West, we're taught that you have to break everything down and know everything. And it's got to be a certainty. And there's a mystery to life. And there's some things you can't know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and there's some things you don't need to know. And and there's some things because the finite, as long as we're in these bodies, yes, we come from infinity and we'll go back. But as long as you're in these bodies, you're finite. And the finite can never comprehend the, in, the infinite. It's yeah. just, it just can't right yeah. now. And so, um, and maybe that's what gets on people's main nerves about technology because I got to tell you, if we're not careful, and maybe we've already gone past that mm. point, I'm talking about societally speaking, yep. that science is the new religion. Oh, oh, absolutely, uh, 100%. And I mean, the, the, even right. yeah. a, a lot of people um, misinterpreted the, the Mayan prophecy for 2012. Uh that happened and the the whole calendar is day and night in in the Mayan calendar uh, the cycles work in day and night and one of them is the evolution of a technology be it fire be it be it napping flint into a knife you know um that's that's the daylight that's the daylight of the calendar that's the daytime the nighttime is the application of that technology and what it does to mankind and and how we deal with it is the nighttime and that's what we're in right now as of 2012 is that that i think it's uh, carlos Cedillo would slap me he's our uh mayan mayan, mayan calendar reader for the show um i want to say it's a 13,000 year cycle that, that the Mayan calendar is based on. So the next 13,000 years of humanity will be up to our application of the technologies that we have at hand, you know, um, which is in and of itself a point of manifestation, you know, and, and that what are you what are you going to do with the knowledge at hand? Because, yeah, once you once you have that knowledge that you are able to manifest that you were able to do something on that. And believe it or not, folks, it could be a small manifestation. It can be big ones. Um, it can be life-changing and life-affirming manifestations. Uh, how, do you, how do you, I guess, A, maintain yourself as a person and B, maintain yourself spiritually to, to maintain that? Um, I think you have to ask yourself again. There's always it's it's the Socratic Platonic. Why do I want this? Mm. Why do I really want it? I give you an example, uh, an illustration. Today, um, a woman came into my office for pastoral care, and she's a lovely woman. Her family, um, she's got a husband and three lovely kids, 
and they've been going on quite the roller coaster ride uh, financially. Um, and but she kept saying that she's putting it out there um, that that changes. So she's trying to manifest. Today she came in, and we caught up. It was delightful. Uh, she, her, and her husband work in construction. She said since COVID, eighteen months ago, two years ago almost, had more work than they could handle. The, the windows of heaven were opened, and a blessing was poured out. Now. But now, now, this is what she asked for. But now she wants to quit. Uh, she's a very talented uh, artist. She, she's a sculptor. She does clay pottery. She's very gifted with her hands. And now she wants to quit. Now, I'm not making a value judgment on that. No. If she's going to do, they have enough money now that, that maybe they don't both have to work. But my point is, uh, she, she said, this is what we wanted. And the universe, God, whatever, said, okay, I sent it to you. And it turned out to be not really what she wanted, mm. at least at least in the long term. And so you always want to ask yourself, and it's, you can't do this all the time. We're human beings, but you want to say, what do I want this for? Do I really need it? Um is it, am I doing this to get back? It's a, you know, you just want to just start. It doesn't have to be these deep Socratic questions, but you just want to say, you know, why, why am I doing that? You want to explore. You want to self-examine. I had another guy come to me uh, uh, yesterday, uh, Sunday, right before the sermon. He said, I did something, and now I have they, I don't know all the ends of it. He volunteers with this guy. The guy may be having some mental illness problems. Um, the guy seems to take to him. Uh, let's call him John. My, the, the guy's name is Ed. And, and, and so John is the one who's got some issues. And so Ed said, we were talking the other day, and I invited him out to lunch. And I asked him if he wanted to come to lunch, and he said, it took him about 10 seconds, he said, before he decided to do. And he said, I don't know why I did that. And I said, well, obviously you're uncomfortable from it. You know, there's an old saying, you don't make decisions when you're too happy and you don't make them, you don't make promises when you're too happy and you don't make promises when you're too sad. Yeah. So we went there before the sermon and just asked him, I said, why'd you do it? Well, he kind of takes to me. He likes me. Okay, so you did it because he likes you. You know, what else did? Well, maybe I feel a little sorry for him. Okay, you feel a little sorry for him. Okay, so we just went down a list because, he, and I said, he said, I said, you could always cancel it or you can see what comes of it. Mm. But the lesson is don't be so reactive. You know, how many times in your life have you befriended someone and you wish the hell you never had? Because either they were too needy or it just wasn't a good idea. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We all want to be liked, but just because someone likes you doesn't mean, you know, and, 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 and so that's what I'm trying to get at the crust of the crutch of your question is we are constantly in, in a self exploration mode because that's how we get to know ourselves. You know, yeah. uh, why, why, otherwise you wind up going through life doing things, you, you know, saying yes, when you want it, when you mean to say no, because yeah. you don't have any boundaries and then you get frustrated and then you'll lie to get out of it. Yep. Not going to ask for a show of hands, but we've all been there. And so you kind of want to know, okay, part of being woke, and I'm not talking about in the social, political, cultural context that we live in today, but part of being woke, part of being conscious, part of being aware, call it what you will, is kind of knowing yourself. Yeah. You know, knowing when I'm taking myself too seriously. Yeah. You know, or I'm, I'm being passive aggressive. Uh, what am I doing? Let me let me just take a breather here. Yeah, and 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 that's that's what it means to be conscious and to be a human being. And you can still enjoy your life. You don't have to beat yourself up, but you kind of know. Yeah, I, that, I got a pattern there. I need to kind of look at that. You know, I'm doing yeah. that again. Yeah. You know. 
and and it, it, that that goes to so many realms in life. Whether whether you're talking romantically, whether you're talking yeah. um, about about the patterns of study, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. like uh, it's an old dog situation, and and it's the <laughs> fact of like you will keep. But once again, I, I always hear Father Andy Colzo just ask me, so, "Yep, yep, uh huh." So how's that working out for you? Yes, that's right. Because <laughs> you know, oh, I'd that... go to I'd yeah. go to my spiritual director once a month, and we'd talk, and then we'd go out and have a beer, you know, and things like that. But uh, yeah, I was like I was like twenty, twenty one years old, you know. What what twenty twenty one year old didn't just wash, rinse, repeating the exact? How many how many forty, fifty, sixty year olds do you know that are emotionally and spiritually wash, rinse, repeating? the situation yeah yeah because we can we can get stuck and 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 what you talked about just now was compassion Mm. because or at least empathy um and and we could are they could be the same thing you know when when Mm. i when i know that i'm struggling with something or i have struggled i'm less likely to get you know a wad in my pants when, when someone else does something to me, because I can say I've been there. I know yeah. that's a difficult thing. Um, you know, and you know, sometimes, you know, it's going to get, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be annoying, but we see the speck and not the log. And so, but when I know uh, I was, I was talking to this guy uh, not too long ago, a radio person, and uh, we hit it off and uh, he was down because his marriage broke up and it mm. wasn't, you know, his wife just said, I'm tired of this. And it just kind of blindsided him. And, um, and who knows, I don't know the ins and outs. It's, sure. but I do, but I knew what it was because I'd been divorced twice. And so I just reached out and I said, you know, Hey, if you ever need to talk, you just need an ear. And, you know, and he kind of perked up. Now, I know why I did that, because the human in me connected with the human in him. Yeah. And he, I know that's a hurting feeling, brother, when, you know, even when it's the worst relationship, you grieve what could have been. And so you go, oh, my God. And, and, And so, you know, there's an empathy there. There's a compassion there. There's a humanity there. And you want to manifest, if you're kind to other people, that kindness comes back to you. If you're generous with other people, now I'm not saying you do it for that reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't worry about the law. The law takes care of itself. But the, the universe will mirror back to you the kind of energy you put out there. It is done unto you as you believe. You reap in the parlance of the Middle East of Jesus' time, you reap what you sow. Yeah. Now we call it karma, or you can call it cause and effect. But whatever you call it, it is real. It is a real law. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 and it is not a law of diminishing returns. It is a law of increased gains. Um, it's a gift that keeps on giving if you are genuinely who you say you are. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, when you need help, the help will be there. It's like when your prayers, you know, rather than saying, dear God, please give me this, please give me that. You can just say, look, I affirm I'm in a jam here and you never let me down. Yep. And I know you're not going to let me down now. I know this. I'm coming to you and I am saying that I affirm, you know, however you want to word your prayers. I'm not going to sit here sure, and sure. tell people. But, but, you know, you, you know, it's a different energy. Yeah. When you're acting like it's Santa Claus up there, or as opposed to, like I told you earlier, when I really wanted something in my life, and I'll be 65 next year, I, I, I'll be on Medicare now, uh, Medicaid next year, to be honest with you. And uh, who who thought time would go go so fast? But I always got, I always got what I wanted, both positive mm-hmm. and, and negative. negative. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, so, you know, this is use, use the law. 
use because the law is not a respect of persons. You can be an atheist. You 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 can be an yeah. agnostic. Yeah. You can be. But but the law is what I put out will come back to me. Yeah. 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 Physics. Physics knows no religion. Yes. And and this is really and just is just a sub law of physics. That's all it is. You know, equal yes. opposite reaction. Um, yeah. You you put something out. <laughs> It's yeah, going to keep going till it hits the end. Yeah, they're there for us to use. Yeah. They're there for us to use. And, uh, you know, and, uh, I, you know, for for a lot of people, it's I guess it's hard to surrender, I guess, because you do have to have a certain amount of surrender. You do have to understand that. Ultimately, and and accept the fact that ultimately you are in no control. While while you while you have power of manifestation and everything else, you have no control over the way that that will necessarily manifest. Um, and you have to be very open minded, and you have to be willing to look at all facets of your life um, to see where that is manifested. You know, um, and and I guess it's the difference between uh, like the example I used to give the same kids that I gave the example of the slinky to. Um, it was it was the example of you. You could pray to God every day except Tuesday for six months that you pass geometry. Guess what's not going to happen if you don't study geometry. Yeah, you're not going to pass. Um, because you didn't put your way, you didn't push. You didn't push the slinky. You got to push yeah. the, like you still got to put that's your right. work in. That's right. That's you, exactly. You that's, still got to put your effort in. Um, yes, you got to stay, and you got to stay connected to your source. You're right. And people need to know that because, well, how come it didn't happen for me? Well, you, you can't, you, you've got to, you've got to do the footwork. Yeah. You've got, you, you've got, but, but if you want, to, to manifest, you must you must first look to yourself. Hmm. You you have to look to yourself, the God within you. You know, um, and it's and people call it New Age or it's not New Age. Th this is our, our this our is as old age this. as you can get. Th yeah, yeah, they knew this. Uh, we, we're just discovering it. And I'm not talking about, and I'm not going to poo-poo it either. You know, you're in your car and you, you visualize a parking space. If that works for you, that's fine. But, I, you know, but I'm, I'm just saying on a, on, a, on a larger level, if you want to be successful, the universe is helping you. If you want to be successful, the universe, God, will help you. But you've got to be coming from that place that you really want to put the footwork behind it. Yeah. But you must know, you must say, I deserve this. I deserve the good. I deserve a healthy relationship. I deserve a well-paying job that will have some benefits. I deserve, you fill in the blank. Yeah. I mean, I write down my goals and I read them every day because there's some things I want to do. Yep. Uh, and you know, like I said, I'll be 65. So I'm writing down. Where do I want to be a month from now? Where do I want to be a year from now, six months from now? What do I want to have done a year from now? And the ultimate one is five years because I'll be 70. And uh, But I write it down. It may change, but I write it down, and I put it out there, and I see it. And I say thank you because I know it's coming. Yep. I yeah. know it's coming. I'm thanking you already for it. Yeah. And and uh, like you said earlier, it really is that um, acting as though it already is. That's right. Fake it till you make it, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a huge turn of phrase in my industry. But I cannot tell you the number of times that um, I and other people I know have shown up and been like, "So yeah, I'm going to look up this manual real quick." And like start watching a YouTube instructional like, okay, there's the quick start. Cool. All right. Let's have a show. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and learning yeah. on yeah. the fly. But you, you also you, well, got to be, you got to be comfortable enough with the flow to be able to learn yes. on the fly. Yeah. You have to see. I Let me tell you. 
right now. I know what when I sit in my office at church, I saw this happening when I was in my 20s, 30s, 30s. I, I, you know, I saw myself in a room with my my degrees on the wall. I'm sitting in a church office. People are coming to me and I'm doing uh, Reiki energy, hands on healing. People are coming to me and we're having um, pastoral care. I saw this when I was in my 30s. And now it's happened. So I know that we can get what we want. We just have to make sure what we want, we work towards. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll be saying this, oh, that never works for me. That never works for me. And granted, there's some things that won't, you know, and, and, and that's just part of life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, that's just part of life. But for the most part, I guess what I'm trying to say is we have more control. And, and then I'm using that in a, a positive way. We have more influence over our lives than we allow ourselves. And, and, and I know we're winding down. We have more. And so part of the reasons that we don't um, uh, really get that is because we've been we haven't been taught it. Our parents couldn't yeah. teach it to us because they weren't taught it. Our religions didn't want to teach it to us because they were about fear and control. And 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 whether whether they did it on purpose or not is not the issue. Yeah. But 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 you know I I go back. Jesus was a Jew, but he was a different kind of Jew. And so they were like, no, 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 that's not the way we do things. And he was like, well, I'm trying to show you another way. Now, you can get in trouble for that. Okay. Yeah. So, but my point being is just that we, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at begin to change. Yeah. Yeah. You can get up in the morning and say, oh, my God, I'm tired and Oh, you you know, or you can get up in the morning and say, my God, it's the day before Thanksgiving. It's the end of the year almost. Yeah. And, you know, let's well, see what the day is going to bring. My, same, same day. It's yeah. just two different attitudes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And even even the listener and friend, uh, Wavy Dave Everett, that gave us the question about hypostatic union and, and our place within that um, when it comes to manifestation, like that's... It, that's one of the things I tell him in private conversation all the time is happy's a choice. Happy's a choice. It's oh, yeah. it's a choice yeah. you make yeah. when you wake up in the morning as to whether or not you're going to have a good day. Things can happen you, to yeah. you all day. Um yeah. but but it's it's like my old therapist Joe used to say, "Chris, you're going to run into a train driving down the road. It's going to happen. You can't do anything about the train." Trains going by. You could try to stop it. Good luck with that. Um, it's going by. What you need to do is stop and just watch the train go by. Uh -huh. You can't yeah. do anything about the train except accept the fact that there's a train there. Just accept yeah. it. Um, you had yeah. a you had a lot of control over a lot of other things. Um, you cannot well, control you, you that, the, and you, you got to be willing to not control. Well, you have the control of how you react, how you respond. Yeah, yeah. That's, I can't control the other person. Yep. I may not be able to control the situation, but I am at least responsible for how I respond to it. Uh, you know, like Abraham Lincoln says it. You know, you can you can complain because roses have thorn bushes, or you can complain that thorn bushes have roses. Yeah. But where you can just you know, you can just, you know, say, look how beautiful uh, the rose is. And and, and so, but the, the, it takes practice and, and you sometimes you're going to have to, but, but, but if you, if you can feel, if you can um, fake it, and that, I know that's a crude way of saying it, but 
Um, if you can believe, what would it feel like if I was the successful person that I want to be? What would that feel like? What would it feel like that I could help people? You know, I have enough money that I could give to a charity or I could do what, what does that. And if you keep that in your head and you see that you write it down, you cannot help but bring that into your field of, of yeah. energy. Yeah. And and now there's one thing I do want to make clear. Please. There are, I want to reiterate there's some things that you, you can't do. Uh uh you know um you know if some you know sometimes you, things happen your your friend dies from cancer well I, I i saw them getting well i saw them you can do all that but there's some things that are out of your control sure. i also want to be clear that i'm not telling you that if you do have an illness that you gave it to yourself no now mm -mm. there may have been some things you could have done to lessen it um for instance when i was Working as a chaplain, people would come to me. This is just an illustration. Um, you know, they would they would have back problems, they would have leg problems, and I would ask them. You know, they, they're taking this medication and da da da. I would ask them, where do you get your support? Oh, I don't want to be a bother to anybody. Yeah, but do you have any support? You, you how are you? Who, who's helping you go through this? Oh no, you know, no, I don't want to be a burden. Well, yeah. and I would say to them. But if you have no, what do you, what does your back do? What do your legs do? They support you. You have no support. Do you think there's a correlation between yeah. you having, you know, you know, because that, that's, that's what it is. So it's a body, mind, spirit kind of thing. Sure, sure. Uh, but that's different from saying you gave yourself something. Um, I'm just saying, at, at, like we did at the top of the show, if you want to manifest the type of person you want to be, the type of life you want, you have to fake it till you make it. And by that, I mean, you have to imagine what it would be like to be that individual and then work towards it. Yeah. And it's just yeah. the law of quantum physics that you will draw that to you. There's no way it will not come to you. Yeah. And you don't have to, you don't have to worry about, uh, well, suppose this happens, that happens. Uh, like Steve Harvey says, you have to ask, you have to believe, and you have to receive. Yep. And you have to be grateful. And and people use, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm sure, Chris, you know about this, you know, if you look at Jesus feeding the 5,000, mm. well, it's 4,000 in, in, in one gospel, it's five in John, I think, or vice yeah. versa. But, um, you know, Jesus, he thanked his father before he fed them. That's yeah. how sure he was that he was going to do it. Yeah. I'm thanking you ahead of time. Yeah. I'm getting ready to take yeah. these little For the bounty that you're over. about to provide. Yeah, I'm going to thank you. I'm thanking you right now. Yes, and there were some yeah. people in the crowd who bought a little lunch, and, you know, they know Jesus was going to, he's an all-day preacher, so they knew if we sit out here and listen to him talk, we're going to be out here all day. Yeah. We better bring something. Yeah. But 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 the point is, is that that's how sure he was. Yeah. That my need will be met. And that's what we have to do. But we've been taught, please give me this. I'm I'm really not worthy, but if you would just be so kind. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah. Well, we we really have been um, Pavlovially trained. Yes. Um, to the fact that it is that it is a reward that we are yes. due in instead of a right. Um, and somewhere I read, uh, it's the Father's good pleasure. Yeah. To give you the kingdom. That's right. There's pleasure. Well, uh, well, I, and, and I, we I, still I want, even to, I want to give you the kingdom. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly, exactly. The question is, can you handle the kingdom? Can you? That's that's why you gotta be careful. You, because if you ask for something you can't receive, I, oh lord. Oh, if if Spider Man teaches mess. you nothing, people, it's a hot mess. with great power comes great responsibility. Thank you. Um, Amen. Like, 
<laughs> you cannot get so more good. wise than that because That'll you can ask for the power, but that also means you are now responsible. You are now accountable. Yes. You are now and, accountable and, with what you pass on well, to other people and how you well, pass well, it on. Well, now, 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 now we can tie that in to the person who talked about technology. Mm -hmm. We got all Please. this power, but, but we got, no, we got all this power. But 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 we don't want to we we don't we're not responsible with it. Yeah. And I think that's where people like the individual you were talking about say technology is bad. Mm. And, and 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 you know, um but granted, you, like we said earlier, that is that is that tiny T truth and and their experience of the technology. Yes. Um and, and their experience yeah. with being targeted and things like that. You know, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I, I get what they're saying, yeah. but I'm loving it. I couldn't be talking to you tonight. I couldn't do some of my banking. I couldn't yeah. pay some of my bills. You know, now does it break down sometimes? We would have yes. never been connected, beat a dead horse. Michael. I know. So, so, so it's a blessing. It depends what the intention is. Yeah, and um, you know, you know, it's it's lovely. I want to, you know, I want to say to folks, um, if you celebrate Thanksgiving, um, you know, I have a wonderful holiday. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and there's that gratitude thing, you know, uh, we got a lot to be thankful for. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and I love this time of year. I love this time of year. I do feel that people are a little more friendlier. I do, and I like the lights, and I like the, I like the commercialism. I like to to give gifts, and I like to get gifts. I know that it's more to it than that. Sure. Uh, but but I also like that about it. I love to see the, especially when I was living in New York, but I love mm. to see Christmas trees and everybody. To, like, it's the, just beautiful. The want of and, transformation. You know, Oh my goodness! Yes, and so um, I, I'm hoping everybody just as as much as humanly possible because there's a lot of pain out there. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, but but for those of us who are doing okay, um, um, I'm I'm saying I'm wishing you what's the old thing a a merry everything and a happy always. That's you right. Know? That's right. This is um, a wonderful time of year, brother. That's, it, 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 it was a time of year that I, I had some issue with for a long time, but I have mm -hmm. slowly come to reappreciate and, and enjoy. Yes, me too. Um, me too. And me too. Before, before we let you go, there is one more question that I wanted to ask, and that is especially coming up into the holidays, things like that, because it is just that hard time of year for so many. Um, yeah. How can how can we learn to recognize that offbeat blessing, um, that blessing that we've prayed for but is coming in the side door? You know, I think we have to be open to it. You know, sometimes we we the blessings coming in a blue box, but we look for it in a red box and it goes right by us. Um. And, and we just have to stay open to the gifts of the spirit. We just have to stay open. It's no, no formula. You, you, you just have to be open. And the other thing, though, is you want to not let the things you want. Let me rephrase it. You don't want to let the things you want make you forget the things you already have. I think that's crucial. Yeah. Um, uh, that that you don't want to do that, and I think just to be open to the little things, the sunset, the sunrise, the smile you get, the smile you give. It sounds corny, but it, it really is not. You may say, "I don't have any money to give anybody anything this year," so give them a smile, yeah. give them a phone call, yep. give them a little, uh, write a little letter. You know, in technology, I tell you, I felt good a couple of weeks ago. I, I mailed an old-fashioned card. I could have sent an email, but I bought a card. I wrote something in it, and I sent it. Just something like that. You'd yeah. be surprised. The ripple, like you talked about it yeah. earlier in the show, the ripple effect. Yeah. You, it doesn't always have to be monetary, but listen, maybe you got some health issues, but you're still here. 
Yeah. Okay. So you can say 2022, I'm going to manifest some robust health. Yeah. I'm going to man. So, so you aim at the moon and you hit a star. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, do I want to, do I want to get well? So you have to ask yourself that like, like Jesus asked her, do you want, uh, you know, one of the healing stories, do you want, do you want to be well? Cause yeah. some of us don't because the illness we know we want to live with. There's the old joke of Jesus going to Jerusalem mm. and um, uh, he's healing everybody along the way. And, you know, it's not going to be a great week once he gets there. And he's right outside Jerusalem and he sees this guy on a cot and, and he walks over to him and the guy says, no, 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 don't touch me. I'm on Medicare. <laughs> Sometimes we don't want to let go God. of the illness. It becomes a part of our of your identity. identity. Yeah. 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 So, so you want to explore, you want to explore that, you know, you're in that relationship and you're getting treated like, you know, not the greatest, but you still haven't made up your mind to leave, but you're still uh, uh, bitching about what a bad partner they are. And then, uh, but then after a while you have to say, then why are you still there? Yeah. Why you still, after a while, it's not about them anymore. It's about you. So you want to start looking at things like that. Where yeah. do I want to be in my what, where do I want to go? Um, and you just keep your eyes out for the blessings because they're all around us. Yeah. Expect expect the unexpected. In answer to your question, you're looking for it blindsided. Well, you know, look around. Stay and open. accept the unexpected. Yes. Accept the unexpected. Be willing to have okay. that open mind that... That may be it. Yeah. It may be the beginning of a brand new day because 2022, COVID or not, is a new year. And we've got another chance to build again. Yeah. So start writing right now. Where do I, where do I want to be next year? What, what do, where do I want to be this time next year? Where do I want to be six months from now? Where do I want to be five years now? You don't have to see it all like Nostradamus, but write it down. Yeah. You know, I got a, I got a car I want to pay off. I, got, I wrote down, I want to pay my car off by in six months or less. By I put a date, by by April of, of next year, I want to have my car yeah. paid off. In 2027, I want to have X amount of dollars. That's five-year plan uh, to, to retire on. Uh, my girlfriend and I are, are looking for a place to stay. We, we, so um, we, a year from now, we'd like to have a house. Yeah. I'm seeing it. I'm cutting out pictures of houses. I'm looking at yeah. it. Because you got to put the work in. Yep. Yeah. Whether it's building a vision and, board, what have you. Yeah, like, hey, yes. p- you, you know, ma- make yourself that stalker letter of, of, of pictures of your house and yeah. put it in an envelope and put it up. And then next yeah. year. Open it up Take a picture and see, of the phone. see how yeah, close you open. are to that goal. Every day. And stay grateful. Yeah. Stay grateful. You know, mm. I, I I spent so much for Christmas this year and I had some bills. And a friend of mine always reminds me, hey, man, at least you could pay your bills. Yeah. So just chill. Yeah. Just pay them. Just be quiet and pay them. So, yeah, remember, don't let the things you want make you forget the things you have. That's right. That's right. And as sure as night follows day, because it's a law, you'll see what I'm saying. And people have been doing this for thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it I think I think it's really more a uh a lost art. Um I think I think people have kind of forgotten the uh the the gentle art of this because it, there really is a lot of surrender that has to happen. And, um, it's kind of like whenever people, uh, people ask me about the esoteric wild things and, and they're like, Oh, well it's a hoax. You know, like, Oh, crop circles are a hoax. And it's like, well, I don't know. You know, those things go back to the 1500s and you know what they didn't have time to do in the 1500s. Go out and destroy crops of wheat for a right. hoax. They didn't they didn't right. have the time or the means to do that. They were kind of busy not dying of the plague. 
um, on the daily. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, and but, you know, some people, some people say, well, don't confuse me with the facts, okay? I don't want to. <laughs> But uh, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to come on again. I cannot wait to have you on again and again and again with anytime, Curious Realm. Anytime, brother. Anytime. Um, man, anytime. the conversations that we have on and off air are so fantastic. And I, I love that there are people like you out there um, teaching this. You're looking, you're looking in a mirror, brother. You're looking in a mirror. Thank you. Um, your book is amazing. Initiation. Tell everybody where, I mean, you can, of course, get it on Kindle. Um, you can, of course, get it at the Dudes and Beer store and coming up at the Curious Realm store. But where else can you get it? Where can you go for uh, pastoral Amazon. care? Where can you go? T- time for it, shameless self-promotion for your share of the universe. Well, well, you can go to Amazon. You can go to Barnes & Nobles. Um, uh, you can do that. You can reach me on my uh, uh, email. I got rid of my website. I just they just didn't treat me well, but um, mm, I just got rid that. of it yesterday. Yeah, um, but it's okay because Facebook does the same thing. Yeah. And without me doing it, and and you, my my email is Michael initial J as in Jerry initial S as in Sam Carter at gmail dot com. So you can or you can look up Reverend Michael uh, J Carter on Facebook. Michael J Carter, not J S Carter, but um. So, so email me at Gmail, Michael, Reverend Michael J. Carter, uh, Barnes and Nobles, and um, we'll connect. I will answer you. I promise you that. I, I do Reiki. So if you need Reiki healing, I can send you that. Uh, if you need to talk, uh, uh, let's, we could Skype. We could, we could do something and work out something if you want to talk. If you're an experiencer and you're having some problems kind of making that kind of work for you. Uh, the book Initiation will help you. The other books are about UFOs in the Bible. One's a meditation manual. One's about prayer, uh, affirmative prayer, but they're all listed. And um, reach out. I'll, I'll be here. Well, thank okay. you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for continuing to be here for us. Uh, once again, we can't wait to have you back on in the new incarnation Uh Please do hold the line while we close things out real quick, uh, Reverend okay. Carter. Um, while you're online checking out all of his great work, checking out his amazing books, make sure to stop on by dudesandbeer.com. That is where, well, at least for the next week, um, you can get all the episodes. The final episode will be there, of course. Um, final episode will be on our new website, Curious Realm, CuriousRealm.com. Until next time, everybody, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Mark Eddy, thank you so much for listening tonight. Till next time. Thanks you can't for good. listening to You're this episode it. of the we'll Dudes and Beer soon. Podcast. Bye-bye. To listen to our audio streams or chat with us live, download the official Dudes and Beer app for Android and iDevices, available on Google Play and iTunes markets. For more episodes, content, and information, visit us online at dudesandbeer.com. You can also find our episodes on Breach.tv, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast service. Dudes and Beer is a proud member of the HC Universal Network family of podcasts. For more about our sponsors and other podcasts on this network, visit hcuniversalnetwork.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. And until next time, drink responsibly.